eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. A very good evening to everyone present here. We have gathered here to officially approve and hand over responsibilities to the highest, most honorable and prestigious posts of the Student Council. And also, we will be formally releasing our school magazine frames on this auspicious occasion. We welcome our chief guest for the occasion, Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai from India today. And a guest of honor, Mr. Ronit Ranjan, who is a life coach, NLP practitioner, and an SSB coach. We also welcome our respected president, ma'am, Mrs. Janet Gaspar Chaudhuri, and CEO, sir, Mr. Amitabh Chaudhuri. We would especially like to welcome the parents and guardians of all our dear students who have come to witness today's program. Thank you, everyone for being a part of today's program. However, no endeavor can be successful unless it is blessed by the Almighty. So before we start our program, let us pray to the Omnipotent to shower his choicest blessings on us and help us to succeed in our efforts. May I request Mrs. Rama Rauth, Middle School Coordinator, St. Augustine's Day School, Barakpur, to please come forward to conduct the prayer. Over to you, ma'am. Let us all pray. Dear Lord, we are calling upon you today for your divine guidance and help to make this investiture a success as we need a supporting hand to keep us leading in the right direction. We ask that you guide us with your infinite wisdom to show us the right way to a properly and orderly mannered investiture. Bless the students who are chosen today to be an inspiration to others and may they inculcate the virtue of humanity. We ask this prayer through Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. So let us pray together so that the light of enlightenment takes over the darkness of discrimination, injustice, and violence in the world. Let us make this evening a blessed one and invoke the Almighty again by kindling the lamp of knowledge and wisdom. Now, let us pay our homage and regards to the great man for whom we all are here today, a beloved founder, late Mr. Sia Gaspar, sir, the great man who founded and pioneered to build St. Augustine's Day School. Let us begin today's program by showering petals to his portrait. The investiture ceremony signifies the reliance and confidence that the school consigns in the newly invested office bearers. Donning the mantle of accountability, they also pledge to bestow their duties to the best of their abilities. We believe that this child-centric approach of St. Augustine's Day School Barakpur will help our children to be responsible citizens. The establishment of the student council will help our students to grow up and to prosper in future. It will give our students an opportunity to acquire the sort of communication, planning, and organizational skills, which will be beneficial for them in their future. Where words leave off, music begins. Let us immerse ourselves in the soulful rendition of the song, Let It Go, performed by a dear student, Anya Shapal of class 10.
Snow glows white on the mountain I ain't not a footprint to be seen A kingdom of isolation And it looks like I'm the queen The wind is howling like this swirling storm inside Couldn't keep it in, heaven knows I That indeed created a magical atmosphere. Moving on with the program, we are not going to release our school magazine, Flames, on this auspicious occasion. Flames is the reflection of the culture of St. Augustine's Day School Barrack. It's a mirror to the cream of activities and expression of the creativity and imagination of our beloved students. It's a valuable memento for the students and the staff and a golden trophy for the parents and the community to cherish the school for years to come. Flames is a pious attempt to make our budding talents give shape to their creativity. Our beloved students are pioneers in different spheres of scholastic and co-scholastic life. They have contributed to the enrichment of the magazine in different ways. Their write-ups, encompassing their experiences in this difficult time truly highlights their positive spirit, virtue of resilience, and their heartfelt love to their alma mater. I'm sure that this positive attitude, hard work, sustained efforts, and innovative ideas exhibited by our students will surely stir the mind of the readers. I request a respected guest of honor, Mr. Ronit Ranjan, to formally release our school magazine Flames. Thank you, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. 
it's an honor to be part of this ceremony and on behalf of the management the principal the staff and the in the entire student fraternity i officially release the annual school magazine of st augustine's day school thank you so much sir we feel honored and privileged to have with us today in this program mr ronit ranjan who is a life coach nlp practitioner ssb coach and is on his mission to inspire and push people to their highest potential and help them become the best versions of themselves an ex indian army cadet mr ranjan is always there to help people be committed towards their life goals be it wellness lifestyle fitness career or relationships he is also a human book in human library bangalore through which he has told his inspiring life story to young people and motivated them being a very articulate speaker mr ranjan has delivered talks on self help and mental well being through his story at several platforms at the age of 21 he published his first book the mighty mustang which reflects his experiences in and after the national defense academy along with his truths with true love for this book he was declared as the top 100 debutant authors of india by literature's light thank you so much sir for being a part of today's program now i would request sir to please inspire and motivate our children with the magic of your words over to you sir thank you varindra that was a lovely introduction i really appreciate it there were a couple of things that i a couple of words that i noticed this is something that a lot of students ask me words like motivation words like inspiration and i was someone you know i i thought that for the longest time that i've been working i would i would be inspiring people i would be motivating people but recently i realized that you know motivation doesn't really sustain you know motivation or inspiration is just like one of the thing that give you a dopamine high and it just it just does not does not sustain what i have come to terms with it that discipline is something that sustains so to all of you for the next 10 to 15 minutes i'm going to talk i do not expect i do not i do not want you to get motivated i just want you to pick up a couple of value points and apply them if it works for you and just stay consistent with that uh it was a very lovely introduction and you know honestly i love talking to students because it reminds me of my school days i graduated in 2015 i did my schooling from rachi jharkhand and uh, it's always fun to interact with students because i get a lot of these interesting stories and amidst a lot of things that i do writing is something that i love and telling stories is something i love so you know i'm going to just narrate a small story of yours you know in in my journey of writing i have always loved writing you know be it, be it those letters i used to write when i was in the army or these love notes we used to pass when we were in schools or you know these that 10 by 6 inch diary that i always have which is all my secrets you know writing is something that has always helped me a lot but over the years i realized that most of the writing that i was doing it was for myself you know it was it was an emotional release for me and this is where school magazines came into picture i had never published anything officially i used to write in my diary and just keep it there i remember it was my section in charge i remember her name as well uh, she came up to me because she saw one of my pieces somewhere i don't know she just got to know that i write and she asked me to write an article it was in hindi the first article that i wrote her name was mukti ma'am and uh, i was a little hesitant initially but eventually I, i wrote an article that was the first right article that i wrote for someone else for an institution and it got published in the school magazine in fact uh, you know when when you approached me for the talk i called my sister who's back home and i asked her to send me the pictures because i really wanted to know that i mean every word that i say and it, i remember the first diary that i had the first magazine article that was published back in school you know i still have that so i asked my sister to actually send me the pictures in pdf of the uh, the school magazine that i had and you know i i just got very nostalgic this is the first article that i wrote uh, i don't know if you can see it says sambhav hai ek din ek din mein vishva shanti i wrote a i wrote an article about world peace you know i had no clue how world peace works it was just a standard 10 child uh, you know who had his understanding of how the world should be like and i published that and they had like once i published that there was this sense of contribution i just felt that i added value to 
at least five readers that who read that, right? And and that's when I started writing regularly for all the school magazines, and you know, I I started adding value to people, and I carried that to the academy. I remember uh, I joined the National Defense Academy in 2015 because Army was my dream. You know, I had I had grown up, you know, being fantasized, and I and I and I wanted to just be there in that uniform and protect my people, and you know, that's because that's who I am as a person. And when I was there, we don't have cell phones there, we don't have computers, we don't have anything there. So what we do have is these letter pads in which we can write letters to our family and to our loved ones. And I remember every second week after every 14 to 15 days, I'll write a letter. One letter will go to my grandfather, one letter will go to my sister, one letter will go to my teachers. Like it would go directly to the school, you know, it would be addressed to the principal. And then one would go to my friends, you know, as, as, a, as a collective uh, post. And that's how I, I, I kept that spark of writing when I was there in the academy. And honestly, that's the only thing that kept me sane because all the glory that you see outside, you know, when you're under training, you know, nothing of that sort happens like that. So that's something that kept me sane. Unfortunately, in 2017, a back injury ended my career there. And uh, there was a very dark phase. I'm not going to get into specifics, but, you know, uh, I was declared permanently unfit to be a part of the Indian Army. And that's how my uh, career ended. And when I came out, it was like I had my journey of mental health. I was diagnosed with depression and PTSD. And I had been a national athlete before that. And sports was my release. But suddenly, on one side, I had these huge emotions piling up here. On the other side, there was no emotional release. So, you know, it was, this is very uncomfortable space I was. And I suddenly discovered writing again. I remember this one time I was, uh, I bumped my entire class. This was when I was in college in 2017. I joined Christ University in Bangalore. And I bumped the entire day. And I took out a piece of paper and I wrote a five, six page poem. Uh, I named that poem, The Mighty Mustang. It was about my experiences back in the army and how we felt about it and, you know, what I want to do now and stuff like that. And next day I went to my friends in, in the classroom and I read out that piece and everybody's crying. And I was like, you buggers, you're supposed to, you know, support me and you're supposed to, you know, hold me when I cry, but all of you are crying. But then one of my friends, Varsha, she asked me to publish it. She, 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 she told me and I remember, she was like, Ron, you should share your story. So I decided to write a book. I, I just wrote down my story. I didn't even, you know, edit it much. I did not do a lot of fact checking and proofreading. And I just sent it to a publication house thinking, you know, like, let's see if they like the story. And then they responded to me and they said that we want to publish with you. And you know, four months later, I had my book out. Once the book was out, I started receiving a lot of emails and DMs of people from all across the country. People who were going through their journeys and people who shared their stories with me. And, uh, you know, a lot of people shared shared their mental health journeys with me. And I realized that, you know, my purpose in life was to stand at the border and protect lives. What I realized was I, I can still do that from inside the border. And that's when I took, you know, I took life coaching and I took writing very seriously because writing was this one tool by which I connected with people. You know, it's as simple as that. Let's say, let's say I'm here. You invited me as a guest of honor, right? I would come here. I would give a formal speech and I would leave. None of you will connect with me. But if I'm here and you know, if I just open up to you, if I'm a little vulnerable to you, if, if I'm just, if I just trust you a little, you might trust me a little. And that's where in connection start building it. You know, that's how you build rapport. And I always believe that if you want to connect with someone, give a part of yourself, just present a part of yourself. They might, they might not, but you know, I think that's the best. That's something that has worked with me. And uh, through my book, through my writing, I started connecting with people. And then, you know, I started coaching people. And uh, once I was doing then you know, we had covid and then, you know, COVID took a hit on everybody's mental health, even my mental health, my sister's mental health. And while I was doing a lot of advocacy online, uh, I realized that it was not reaching the grassroots level, right? Because you and I were, were watching this live stream, we were very privileged, right? Uh, because we have access to internet, we have access to Wi-Fi, we have a smartphone, email ID, and all. More than 50% of India's population does not have that. So I was like, how do I reach out to a random villager in a random village in India? Um, and this, in fact, this idea came from writing because I was writing a piece and it was about, it was about altruism and it was about service and it was inspired by this movie that I had watched called Red Sea Diving Resort. It's on Netflix. You should watch it. And I was writing about my idea of service. And I realized that uh, I want to serve people, but I want to serve people throughout the country. That's when I started a campaign on mental health. And uh, I, did, I started walking from Kanyakumari on 16th of November, 2020. It took me 156 days and I walked all across the country and I reached Srinagar. Throughout this entire time, for these five months, writing was my pillar because, you know, every day I would walk around 40, 50 kilometers and I will be dead. 
and I was not in a position to talk to anyone. And I'll always have this rough diary with me and a pen. I'll just scribble down something, you know, like some epiphany I had that day or something that reminded me of someone or if I want to write a letter to someone and just keep to myself. And, you know, it was just this anchor that I have. And the walk is over now. I'm back to Bangalore. I, I, you know, I'm working on my company and everything's going well. But every time I feel a little, a tad bit more emotional, you know, I resort to writing because I just went out everything there. To, to every student and every parent who are watching this, please take out a piece of paper after this session is done and just write something, you know. We have a lot of terms for it. We call it journaling. Some people like it taking points. You know, we have a lot of terminologies. I love calling it writing. I love calling it poetry. Even if I've had a bad day, and I don't like eating this and I like eating that, I would write how I feel about it. And I call it poetry because it's just coming from my heart. And that's how, you know, that's how writing has been this emotional anchor for me. And the very reason I'm sharing this with you is, and I, and I don't think there would be a much appropriate moment than this because this is Ledger to School magazine. This is a ceremony for that. And uh, my journey of writing started through a school magazine, which I just showed you. So to everyone who's watching this, always remember that at the end of the day, when nobody is there with you, nobody else, you will always have your writing with you. You'll always have those words that you've written on a piece of paper or that has been published uh, and it's, it's always going to support you. Coming to the more uh, professional part of it, you know, in India, the competition's up, right? And it's very difficult to get your stuff published um, around everywhere. This is where your school comes into picture. I have personally seen a lot of people and a couple of writers that I have recruited I did not see their CV. I asked them that, what did you used to write back in school? Show me some of the articles that you've written in school, you know, show me some of the stuff that you've written in college, you know, I do not need your professional writing, right? I need what you, tell me what you write, tell me what value do you add when you're sitting all by yourself, because I think that's a true test of a person's personality. What does he write or think? What does he or she write or think when nobody's watching? And I think that's the best test. So to all of you, writing is the best way wherein you can figure out things about yourself figure out things about the people you love. And I think that has been one tool that's been really close to my heart. And if any of you wants, has any question about writing or about school magazine, how to go about thing, first of all, just take a step, you know, whenever you're done with this talk, go to your section in charge, you know, just request her that I want to, I want to write something. It could be anything. It could be a very minuscule thing. It could be a huge thing. Just take that step forward. It's, you're only going to go further. And if you have any doubt, my emails are always open. I'm going to share that with the management and because we have time restrictions, I'm going to end my talk here. I really appreciate all of you who have listened to my talk so very diligently. And thank you so much. And just always feel free to contact me. Take care. Thank you so much, sir, for your inspiring address. I take this opportunity to welcome Mr. A.K. Seal. Vice Principal of St. Augustine's Day School, Shamnagar, in this program. Thank you so much, sir, for making it. Ladies and gentlemen, let us begin with the Invest Teacher Ceremony now. We now present before you the outgoing student council members, the outgoing school captain, Deep Jyoti Das, Vice Captains, Urmika Mondal and Simran Singh, and the outgoing prefects who carried their duties diligently and in accordance with the rules and regulation of the school to officially relinquish their posts to the principal. We would like to call on our outgoing school captain, Deep Jyoti Das, to hand over the badge and relinquish his responsibility. Thank you, Deep Jyoti. You have always been a true leader. Thank you for your dedication and commitment. Moving on next, we have with us our outgoing vice captains, Urmika Mondal and Simran Singh, handing over their badges and relinquishing their responsibilities. Thank you students for all your contributions as vice captains of the student council. Moving on next, we have the outgoing Azad House prefects who will hand over their badges and relinquish their responsibilities. Rapti Burman, and Shreya Sen. Thank you students for carrying out your duties perfectly. Next, we have the outgoing Gandhi House prefects handing over their badges and responsibilities. Aurithro Banerjee 
and Oishi Baul. Our prefects have always been ready with whatever responsibilities that were given to them. Well done, students. Next, the outgoing Netaji House prefects will hand over their badges and relinquish their responsibilities. Srijita Chakraborty and Shreya Majumdar. Our student council have always been a strong backbone, helping and assisting us. The outgoing Tigor House prefects, who will hand over their badges and relinquish their responsibilities. Hormi Ghosh and Bishwaroop Chatterjee. Thank you, dear students, for your dedication and heartiest congratulations for successfully performing your duties and making us proud. Now, I would like to call on our outgoing school captain, Deep Jyoti Das, to share a few words with us. Over to you, Deep Jyoti. A very good evening and warm greetings to all. It was an honor to get the opportunity to serve as the captain of our school for the academic session 2020-21. 2020 was indeed a tough year and I want to specially thank CEO Sir, President Ma'am, Principal Ma'am, Vice Principal Ma'am, Headmistress Ma'am, Coordinators and my teachers for their continued support throughout this session. And now I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to all the newly nominated members of the Student Council. The student council represents the school. It not only serves during activities, but also inspire other students and nurture their talents. And I'm sure that the upcoming batch will serve brilliantly and will set new benchmarks through their work. Well, serving in these tough times is not a challenge, but I can assure you that these challenging times will provide you more versatility as a leader and will help you progress smoothly with your future endeavors. I wish that you will keep the flag of St. Augustine Day School Barakpur fluttering high. And lastly, to my outgoing members of the Student Council, it was my privilege working alongside you all. In this uncertain and extraordinary times, we as a team have served well. And in the coming months, wherever life takes you, I wish you all the best for your journey. Once again, congratulations to all. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you, Deep Jyoti, for your wonderful speech. I hope your juniors will follow your words and act accordingly. We feel honored and privileged to have with us today in this program, Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai, who hardly needs an introduction. Mr. Sardesai is one of the most distinguished journalists in our country. Currently, the consulting editor and lead news anchor of the India Today group, he has over three decades of journalistic experience in print and television. He was the founder editor of the IBN 18 network, which included CNN, IBN, IBN 7, and IBN Lokmat. Prior to that, he was the managing editor of both NDTV 24 into 7 and NDTV India, and was responsible for overseeing the news policy for both the channels. He has also worked with the Times of India group, for six years and was the city editor of its Mumbai edition. Thank you so much, sir, for gracing this occasion. Now, I would request, sir, to please share a few words with us. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much uh, uh, for having invited me in the first instance uh, for this very special day. Uh, I know that for any school, a day like this is very special. So thank you very much for inviting me for the investiture ceremony of uh, the St. Augustine's Day School in Barakpo. Uh, 
I myself come from a Jesuit school. I spent, uh, uh, let me just, I hope you can see me. Uh, I spent most of my uh, young uh, childhood, both in school and college, in uh, Jesuit schools. I was in St. Xavier's College and I was in Campion School in Mumbai. And I know the wonderful education that is provided through the schooling system that uh, various groups like the like St. Augustine's, I'm sure, St. Xavier's and the wonderful effort that they put into nurture an entire generation of uh, or several generations of young students, not just in Barakpur, but across this wonderful country of ours. So it's a great privilege, uh, Principal Ma'am uh, uh, and all the teachers and students to be here speaking to you. I also know that we are speaking in very unusual times. These are extraordinary times, times of a kind that I don't think we could have scarcely imagined uh, that we've had to go through this intense period of a pandemic and the lockdowns, I guess has in a way toughened us. It's also been a, a sobering experience for many of us because our lives have changed. We now live lives virtually. You know, in an ideal world, I'd love to be there with you, talking to you and communicating to you face to face. Unfortunately, uh, the pandemic has not allowed for that. And I guess in a way, therefore, it has taught us the importance of living in the moment. And I think as young people, that's a big challenge for you to live in the moment, live in the present. Don't worry about what happened in the past and look optimistically to the future. You know, there are wonderful lines uh, in Hindi cinema, which I keep getting reminded uh, of. Uh, and, and those lines in a way typify, I believe the spirit that, uh, 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 that we should all take. Wo subha kabhi to aegi. The morning will come. You know, it's a bit like John Lennon, the great Beatles uh, singer who sang a song 50 years ago called Imagine. And imagine was his way of imagining a, 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 a beautiful world that would, that would one day uh, sort of be a world of brotherhood, of peace, of, uh, of, just, of, of just a better society. And I think that's the spirit we should take in these pandemic uh, times. At a time when people have gone through so much of trauma, I think it's important to recognize that this is a time of giving, of sharing, of companionship, of providing people empathy. And I think I know these are difficult times, but these are also times for opportunities because when you're faced with challenges, you're also, you also have opportunities. And as young people, I would like to believe that you are India's lucky generation, my friends. You, have, you are going to have far more opportunities than my generation ever had. You have the huge benefit of technology and technology will empower you to perhaps do good for others. And whatever you do in life, please respect the idea that above all else, you are a citizen of India and the wider world. You're a citizen therefore, who's, who's almost bound while you have rights, you also have duties. And some of those duties I believe are to extend a helping hand to others. I believe we become stronger when we give. There is something called the joy of giving. And as you, many of you move into another phase in life, you'll move on to college and face fresh challenges in life. Never forget that. Because I think in the joy of giving lies the joy of life. Uh, my son, for example, uh, friends, is a young doctor. And we haven't really seen him since January 2020. Uh, he studies in Manipal. Uh, he's a final year surgeon. And for him, you know, I don't think he's really been able to take a break for the last 20 months and come home. Because I think somewhere he's recognized that in this pandemic, uh, he also has a duty above all else to his patients and to his profession. And I do believe that's a great way to, to build a certain, it's, 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 it's a great character building. Ultimately, life, my friends, is about character building. We are tossed and turned in life through all the, uh, the highs and the lows. 
And I think we need to maintain a certain economy. You know, we must take success and failures and in our stride. And that's the challenge of our lives in which we live. We shouldn't get carried away too carried away by success, nor should we get too despondent by failure. This too shall pass, my friends. The times in which we live are tough, but this too shall pass. And they will pass because tough times don't last, tough people do. As young people, life about, for you is character building. I'm sure your school, St. Augustine's, has built character above all else in you. Because there is no greater treasure, my friends, in life. Or not all the wealth that you can get, not all the monies that you can make, more than just your own moral character. That, to my mind, is the biggest treasure that you can give to society, to your family, to the indeed to, to the next generation. Because when you build character, I believe that you are, in a way, able to raise yourself as a human being. Uh, and that does not require the riches that, uh, of, of how big your bank balance is. It requires you to remember that above all else, every night when you go to sleep, there is only one person that you're answerable to, your conscience. As young people, you are not, you know, you will, you will, we live in a multimedia world, my friends. You know, every day somebody is saying something about someone on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and we are constantly in this hyper-connected world. And this world tends to make us anxious when what we nearly need to be in life is more calm, more patient, and recognize that in life is not about an Instagram photograph only or about a Facebook post or who said what about who. At the end of the day, you will, the only judge, you are your sole judge. Don't allow people around you to judge you or don't get affected by what people have to say in this hyper-connected world. You know, far too much, many of us are buried in social media. I look at a lot, lot of young people when I'm trying to have a conversation with them, every one minute they're on looking at their mobile phones. I guess the mobile phone is an asset, but it's also a bit of a liability because it prevents us from the art of conversation, from the art of reading from the art of knowledge. You know, I am in a news world and my worry with news is news has become noise when news should be knowledge. We get carried away by the noise around us. My young friends, this is my belief that rather than get carried away by the noise, respect the silence that lies in your heart. And to my mind, in those silences, find your strength. You have... As I said, you are the lucky generation of this country. You will get many opportunities to do and pursue all your dreams, your ambitions, but do it on the basis of a certain honesty of purpose. And if you come to a road and you find two forks, one is the road less traveled, don't be afraid to go down that route. Follow your dreams, chase it. Because as I, I, I do believe that your generation will show the path that maybe my generation was unable to do. Because I do believe that with time, you will find that rather than getting anxious and, and fearful, you must get self-confident and, and be optimistic about the future. I have no doubt that you will do your school very proud, your teachers very proud. You know, there is nothing more precious in life than your relationships that you built here in school with your friends, with your teachers, with all your academic staff. Never forget them. Find your own way wherever you go in the world to remember that this was the school, St. Augustine's Barakpur, where it all started for all of you. And therefore, wear that school badge with pride and honor. Wear your tricolor with pride and honor. Be a good citizen. Be a good Indian. But above all else, be a good human being. I wish each and every one of you all success in life. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Thank you so much, sir. I'm sure our students will follow your guidance.
Now we have with us our presently nominated student council members, school captain, vice captains, along with the presently nominated house prefects. And we are going to hand over the badges and sashes to all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present before you the nominated student council for the session 2021-2022. The nominated school captain, Srija Pal. I, Srija Pal, feel honored to have been nominated as the captain of the student council. I assure to work earnestly and keep the school motto of learning, leadership, loyalty in high regards. We are really very proud to hand over the captain's badge and sash to her. I'm sure she'll prove to be a good leader and set an example by her leadership. Moving on next, we have the nominated vice captains, Omlan Ghosh. I, Omlan Ghosh, feel honored to have been nominated as the vice captain of the Students' Council. I vow to remain committed to uphold the values and ethos of my school. And Pruthom Banerjee. I, Pruthom Banerjee, feel honored to be nominated as a vice captain of the student council member. I will remain committed and make a valuable contribution to my alma mater. Now, we are handing over the badges and sashes to them. We are sure they will perform their duties and responsibilities diligently. Moving on next, we have the nominated Azad House Prefects, Mohuna Bhattacharji. I, Mohuna Bhattacharji, feel honored to have been nominated as a Prefect of Azad House. I will carry out my responsibilities with humility in mind and regard my school more important than anything else. And Vidipta Barua. I, Vidipta Barua, feel honored to have been selected as the Prefect of Azad House. I will be committed and dedicated to carry out my duties towards my school. We are handing over the badges and sashes to them. We are sure they will carry out their responsibilities and dedicate themselves for the betterment of their alma mater. Moving on, we have the nominated Gandhi House Prefects, Meghna Shah. I, Meghna Shah, feel honored to be nominated as the Prefect of Gandhi House. I will be honest and impartial in discharging my duties. And Anushka Paul. I, Anushka Paul, feel honored to have been nominated as the Prefect of Gandhi House. I will be focused and uphold the school honor and prestige come what may. We are glad to hand over the badges and sashes to them. I hope their contribution will set an example for their juniors. Next we have the nominated Netaji House Prefects. Anvesha Konar. I, Anvesha Konar, feel honored to be nominated as the Prefect of Netaji House. I am privileged to be given this opportunity to lead, learn, grow and serve my school. And Sneha Bhattacharya. I, Sneha Bhattacharya, feel honored to have been nominated as the Prefect of Netaji House. I will be a role model and make sincere efforts to ensure discipline in the school. Now we are handing over the badges and sashes to them. We are sure they will perform their duties and responsibilities diligently and with full dedication. And last but not the least, we have the nominated Tigor House Prefects, Prothoma Sarkar. Hi, Prothoma Sarkar. Feel honored to have been nominated as a Prefect of Tagore House. I will endeavor to bring laurels and glory to my school. And Ayushmita Gupta. I, Ayushmita Gupta, feel honored to have been nominated as the prefect of Tagore House. I will uphold my school values of discipline, respect, integrity, and resilience. 
we are glad to hand over the badges and sashes to them. We are sure they will abide by the spirit and rules of the school and perform their duties and responsibilities diligently. Moving on next, I would like to call upon the school captain, vice captains, and prefects to answer a few preliminary questions before they take their solemn oath. May I request our principal, ma'am, Mrs. J. Biswas, to please ask them those few preliminary questions. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Barit sir. Good evening to one and all present here. A few questions to student council on behalf of St. Augustine's Day School Barrackpur. Do you promise to abide by the spirit and the rules of the school? Do you promise not to allow anything except sickness or necessary work to keep you away from performing your duties as leader and a student? Do you promise to devote time every day in personal prayer, studies and service and be example to others in the school and at home? Do you promise to serve your school and your country and work diligently to give the best and reflect your good influence in all things? I, I do. do. Then please come forward and take your oath. I, Shrija Pal, on behalf of the Student Council, promise to abide by the rules of our school to maintain high standards, ideals and traditions to be loyal and cooperate with our teachers and fellow Augustinians to perform faithfully the duties of my offices. Ladies and gentlemen, we present before you the members of the Student Council for the year 2021-2022. Congratulations, children. We heartily congratulate all the newly appointed office bearers. I hope you will be successful in carrying out your duties and responsibilities diligently. Now, I would like to call upon our school captain, Srija Pal, to share a few words with us. Over to you, Srija. Thank you, sir. And good evening to one and all present here. It is an immense moment of pride for me that the school has given me the opportunity to shoulder the responsibilities of a school captain. Being a representative of all the students, I promise to be a role model for all of them. I will remain focused and will sincerely execute all the duties that will be shouldered upon me. I will perform my responsibilities with utmost perfection and set an example for all. I assure that I, along with my other council members, will keep the school motto of learning, leadership, loyalty in high esteem. Thank you. Thank you, Srija. Now, may I request Mrs. Ipshita Roy, Senior School Coordinator, St. Augustine's Day School, Barakpur, to deliver the vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As we come to the end of this wonderful evening, let me first take the opportunity on behalf of the entire team of St. Augustine family to congratulate the newly appointed student council for the session 2021-2022. Being a part of the highest body of the school, we hope you will be able to demonstrate the desired leadership to guide your juniors in right direction and perform your duties with utmost dedication and diligence expected from you all. Wishing you all the very best from all of us. We take this opportunity to express our sincere wishes to the outgoing prefects who have served the school with best of their efforts since the past one year. May the learnings from being the young leaders in the school help you further in all your future endeavors. We wish you good luck in the days ahead to come. We extend our heartiest thanks and gratitude to our most revered chief guest, 
Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai for gracing the occasion amongst his extremely busy schedule. So we are grateful to you for being with us this evening. We are thankful to our guest of honor, Mr. Ronit Ranjan for joining us this evening. Your words were extremely motivating for our young students. Thank you for your presence, sir. Our sincere gratitude to our most respected CEO and secretary, sir, Mr. Amitabh Chaudhuri and president, ma'am, Mrs. Janet Gaspar Chaudhuri for being with us this evening. We are grateful to our governing body and managing committee members whose presence is a constant source of motivation to all of us. We are thankful to our respected principal ma'am, Mrs. J. Biswas, without whose support and guidance, this program would not have been possible. We are grateful to our vice principal ma'am, Mrs. Shweta Ray, for being our mentor at every point of time. I also take this opportunity to thank our headmistress ma'am, Mrs. Atri Mitra, for her constant supervision to make this virtual program a great success. My sincere gratitude to our IT team, without whose technical support, this program would not have been successful. We are extremely thankful to our teachers who have worked tirelessly day in and day out to make the event a grand success. The entire team has shown the highest dedication in their work, which is extremely appreciable. We extend our gratitude to Mr. A.K. Salesa, Vice Principal St. Augustine's Day School, Shamnagar, and his team for joining us this evening. Last but not the least, our heartiest thanks goes to our most dearest parents for their constant cooperation and wholehearted support towards us for making the event a successful one. With that, I would like to conclude my vote of thanks. Stay safe and stay healthy. Good night to all. Over to you, Barindra sir. Thank you, ma'am. With that, we come to the end of today's program. I request everyone to please stand up for the school anthem.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being a part of today's program. We all may log off now. Thank you.